What's up, everybody? This is Dan Physics from Ex Machina Soundworks in Brooklyn, New York. We're here today with the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only Kuma. How you doing today, man? How you doing, man? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm right. blessed. Can't complain. Nice, nice. Well, I'm glad you're here today. I've been wanting to get you, you know, on the interview. This is uh, the the uh, beginning. Um, I, forgot, I can't even articulate what I'm trying to say in terms of uh, the, the 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 inaugural uh interview of this series that we're doing so i'm uh, glad you're here glad you're the first and i guess we'll just jump right into it um kind of wanted to say it could you share a bit about your background and how you started the music production and like what were some of your early influences wow uh yeah i mean i've been playing you know i started by playing the violin that's really where it all started when i was like you know like seven eight years old and I started by playing the violin and, you know, I got really into it, the classical music, all of that. So I was doing that in one lane. And at the same time, I was really influenced by a lot of the music that I grew up listening to, which was definitely like a plethora of sounds. It wasn't necessarily just one genre. Like my dad is a huge Fleetwood Mac fan, Stevie Nicks, you know, the vibes. So I was listening to a lot of Fleetwood Mac when I was in the house, Prince, MJ, uh, you know, some 90s R&B cats, you know, like Brian McKnight and, you know, um, Boys to Men, stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, so I was like in this space where I was listening to also like rock and like, you know, Black Sabbath, ACDC, Pink Floyd. Uh, so like I was listening to a bunch of stuff. And then as I got a little older, uh, you know, I started listening to, you know, more like rock and metal and hardcore and uh, my influence was sort of blended because then while I was getting into the metal and the hardcore, I was also super into hip hop. So I had this weird amalgamation of sounds that were stuck in my head and that sort of really shaped, I guess, my sound, which, you know, and now speaking of which, I'm big into country too. So now primarily what I listen to on a daily basis is I'm listening to country music, hardcore, mm -hmm. metalcore, and pop here and there. That's pretty much it. That's all I really listen to at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a, but my sound is definitely uh, it's different. I, I would, you know, I, I, that's such a that's such a ugh answer. I know, like artists make like I'm different. I'm like, you know, I'm special. Like whatever. But like, if you do listen to my records, it's not like you could pinpoint that. Oh, this is a pop record. This is a hardcore record. This is a metal record. This is a pop mm -hmm. punk record or not right. it's it's not You're definable gamut, basically pretty much you know but i'm trying to do it in a way where it's digestible and it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like it's like a, a like you know just like a, a garbage platter like like we get at the diner right the local diner mm -hmm. garbage platter okay, i'm not trying to make a garbage platter i'm trying to make it presentable and digestible sure. to an audience so that they're like you know what i appreciate the little nuanced odes to all these different mm -hmm. genres but it's still under like the indie pop you know umbrella if you want to call me if you were to define my genre i'd probably call myself indie pop or all pop um actually scratch that all pop not indie all pop okay. and okay. that just gives me that just gives me more of like a, um gives me more freedoms when it comes to how i arrange my songs um content of my songs uh, lyricism of my songs, they don't have to be so particularly written in a certain way. They can be very, uh, you know, um, you know, heavily on the metaphors and the similes. They can lean more heavily on that and painting a picture as opposed to it being like, you know, very straightforward lyricism. So there's a lot of things mm -hmm. that the all pop space allows you to, I guess, quote unquote, get away with and really just like explore the blending of genres. That's, that's really where I look at it. Well, what got you into music in general besides i mean you said earlier about your father's influences and just in general but like what what was the spark that got you into doing like wanting to make music i would really say that it came down to how i wanted to express myself um you know i wasn't necessarily growing up i wasn't the best communicator and i wasn't particularly thrilled at the idea of expressing my feelings and I really wasn't too good at it. So I wasn't the best communicator. I wasn't really that good at uh, expressing my feelings. I feel like I've obviously grown over the years and now I'm much better at it, but I still don't think I can really get across how I feel to somebody 
or really get across my emotional, I guess, either distress or positivity verbally in a conversation. But I can do that when I write songs. I feel like I feel like I have nothing holding me back. I feel like I'm having a conversation with God when I'm when I'm singing into the microphone. That's really how I feel. I feel like I'm having a conversation with God. I feel like the mic in to me is God because it's able to it's the only thing in my life that never judged me, that never turned its back on me, that never, you know, shamed me, that never did anything. All it said is, "Hey, I'm gonna listen to you." In regards of what you got to say, I'm gonna listen to you. And to this day, there's nothing more than music that really has my back, you know? People come and go, you know? Life is life. But there are certain pillars in people's lives. And for me, that's the mic. The mic is the pillar for my life. Like if someone said, hey, what is that obelisk that can't be moved in your life? The one thing you know from now till the end of your days will, that will always have your back, it's the mic. 100%. Got it. Interesting. Um, I guess that actually leads us into the next question. Is, uh, how would you describe your approach or your philosophy to music production and or mixing? I mean, you're doing more writing and production than anything else, right? Uh, I At this point, I only really write songs and sing, and then I have producers and engineers who work on that that aspect of my music. I'm, I pretty much 100% I'm, I'm only focusing on like the artistic aspects at this point. Um, but I do possess, I would say, a little bit of knowledge, at least when it comes to mixing and engineering and, mm-hmm. you know, um, production. I'm always heavily involved in the production of my songs, even if I'm not necessarily the one playing the guitar or the drums or the bass. Mm-hmm. I'm big into the arrangement of the record or even like melodies and ideas. I'll just sing it to uh, one of my producers or one of my guys that's, that's working on a song with me. Um, Somebody who I have an excellent relationship with and who basically reads my mind when it comes to production is my boy, Tony. We both know Tony. Shout out, Tony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, incredible producer, incredible artist, incredible human being all around. Um, was probably the biggest pillar for my album that I just recently finished. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just really at this point, I just write records. To, I guess my my creative process at this point is that I'll get like a loop. Uh, I'll grab a splice loop or I'll cl- or, or Tony or some or, or any of my other guys who help me produce, they'll send me some loops. I'll write an entire record to the loop and then we produce the entire song around the initial lyricism and the loop. And then we'll just build the entire song from scratch around that. And nine times out of 10, the original loop that was in the song, it's not even in there anymore. Interesting. That's cool. It's interesting taking a process. Um, can you explain how, uh, Ex Machina loudspeakers have impacted your work? Um, you know, did they provide you any kind of unique benefits that other speakers did, don't, or didn't? Clarity and trust are the two things. Okay. Clarity and trust. Um, as somebody that is very particular about his vocals and the way I sound when I sing, even post tuning, when it comes to EQ and compression on my vocals, I'm very, very particular. I'm, I'm borderline annoying when it comes to that kind of stuff. And I've had a very difficult time with other speaker systems because I haven't really been able to trust what's coming out of the speaker because every time I hear my vocals in one environment with one set of speakers and then I try and translate it to a different environment, it sounds entirely different. So I'm like, well, what's the truth? I don't hear the truth. And then in some speakers, I would hear that the vocal was over compressed. In other speakers, I would hear that the vocal was not not compressed enough. Some speakers would would applaud my EQ moves. Other speakers would um, showcase my EQ moves as being poor choices. So at the end of the day, I, I didn't even know what was right and what was wrong. So when it came down to getting my songs mixed, I didn't have an accurate re- representation of what my, my vocal even sounded like only after the mix. And that was very frustrating to me because obviously we couldn't nail my vocal tone or the sound that we were trying to go for because everyone has different ears, different environments, different everything. There was nothing that was steadfast across the entire environment. And what Ex Machina speakers have done for me is finally allow me to trust what's coming out of the speaker. Because when I make compression choices and EQ choices for my vocals, or even when my vocals get tuned and sent back to me or whatever, I can trust what I'm hearing. And I'm like, okay, I can hear the nuances of 
vocals like I've never heard them before. The clarity is unsurpassed. I can hear the slightest bit of over compression. I can hear the slightest amount of transient detail in a peak that maybe I wanted to somehow get rid of via compression or automation, vocal automation. I mean, sorry, vocal, Jesus. <laughs> Volume automation or clip gaining. Um, that's sort of where it's at. I mean, I've just been able to just really trust what I'm hearing. So I can like shape the nuances of my vocal in ways I could have never done before. So when we send it out for mixing and finishing up production, the vocal sounds phenomenal across any system. I mean, any of my mixers who mixed, you know, my album uh, have always said my vocals were always on point. And my, la my, my, my debut album was pretty much entirely recorded, tracked, and a good amount of it was mixed on X, Mon you know, X Machina systems. So um, it really goes to show that the design and development of the speaker was concentrated around clarity and truth. And that's exactly what I get out of them. I get that these speakers do not hold anything back. If my choices are wrong, it will bang me over the head and tell me that I fucked up. It will tell me, it does not care. It will tell me the truth. It does not matter. If I do a good job, it won't flatter me. It just won't ding me for it. You know, and that's, that's one of the things that I really enjoy about these speakers. It's not like, oh, you made a great choice. It sounds phenomenal. It's going to be like, all right, well, that's what you were supposed to do, genius. And like, you know, if you don't, it will come down on you. Mm -hmm. So that that level of basically sonic accountability is something that I've seen has never been done before in a pair of, you know, studio grade loudspeaker systems. You know, um, even when, when we discussed the competition um, or the class of speakers that X Machina, uh, you know, compete against. Other monitors only offer colored solutions that, you know, are not accurate in terms of representing what's really being recorded or tracked. Um, or I'm getting, you know, speakers that flatter the sound in unnatural mm -hmm. ways, or they do their best to make it sound perfect but in reality, you know, it's not. And then also the biggest problem I have with speakers that compete with Ex Machina is that their DSP either overcorrects, undercorrects, or it simply is too room dependent so that you can't even use the onboard DSP to control the frequencies in the room. You'd have to buy like a separate trin off system, even though you you have a pair of speakers that already run internal DSP, which is mind blowing to me. So it, it makes no sense. Uh, are there any uh, upcoming projects or calibrations, or calibrations, upcoming projects or collaborations you could share with us? Yeah. So I've actually just uh, finished my debut album. It's called Gray Skies. Um, it hasn't dropped yet. You know, that process is still being figured out. But I did complete my debut album. And um, it's big thanks to Ex Machina Soundworks for even making that possible. You know, I mean, these speakers really allowed me to get these songs knocked out super fast the mixes on these songs were done like <laughs> clockwork because there was really not much to do you know um i treated the guitars or the vocals that need to be treated i did all of that the compression was just right on them nothing was like i never got a call from any of my mixers being like this song is completely fucked we can't save it i never got one of those calls yeah that never happened yeah so uh, I guess lastly, before we finish up here in a second, like what's the best piece of advice you could give, or you, I'd rather, what's the best piece of advice you've received in your career and how has it shaped you as a producer? I mean, the best advice I ever got was don't settle for other people's ideas of you create your own idea of you. That was the best piece of advice I ever got because I never wanted to really be a producer or an engineer. I just looked at those those um, caps as like little hats as, as um, stepping stones to being an artist because I felt that in order to be an artist, you needed to have an encompassing view of the entire process. 
So I spent a good amount of my life doing jobs I didn't want to do in the, you know, when it came to production or engineering, or I, I really never really learned any of these skills because I wanted to be an engineer. You know, I, I never, I never found passion in that or even production really. It was just more like, okay, well, it's a skill set I need to know. Uh, so I developed those skill sets to help my artistry and that's why I push my artistry 100%. I don't really speak about my production or my engineering capabilities, or even if I have those skill sets, I, I, des I have those skill sets to help push my artistry to the next level so that, you know, my team around me knows I'm not a dud and I'm not like, you know, an artist that has zero clue about production or engineering or tracking. It's just like, uh, can you make the, uh, the echoey sound that you get when you're in the bathroom? Can you put that on my vocal, please? Like, I'm not saying stuff like that. You know, I'm like, I want a plate and I want you to blend it with a hall. And this is the kind of plate I like. I like the new sound toys, super plate, put that on there. I really like the way it sounds. I like the Valhalla on it. Like I can be very particular with what I want. So I, I can speak the language of engineer, if you will. So it allows me to do what I gotta do. And then my production skill set allows me to view songs differently. So after I finish writing a song, when I have to sit down and arrange it and produce it with my producers, I still have the mentality to be like, okay, cool. Let's keep the energy, let's slowly build the energy throughout the song. So how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna not create dips in energy? If we're gonna make it a dynamic record, what what guitar parts should we have here? What bass parts should we have here? Should we change the rhythm guitars here? Should we, you know, have no drums here? Like all of those other executive, you know, producer decisions. I have more clarity on because I have those skill sets. That's that's pretty much, you know, how I built my life in the music industry. I, you know, I spent a lot of time doing things I didn't want. And, you know, that's just how life is, right? And then you finally get to a point where you could do what you love. And for me, it's being an artist through and through. It's always something I've wanted to do. Singing, writing has always been a part of my life. And that's that's been my primary focus. Even if the focus was lost over the couple of years, it it it, it always came back full circle. And now we're here where I have a finished album and, you know, I couldn't be more proud of accomplishing this, you know, three year process. Okay. Oh, three years, that's a long time to spend on it. Well, I guess that's not really that long to spend on an album, but uh, from start to finish. But yeah. um, well, I guess last question too, for, I have for you that is, uh, you know, where can people find you, you know, for find more about you, uh, like social media, website, et cetera? Right. So currently I, 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 I'm primarily on Instagram. So if anyone wants okay. to find me on Instagram, my Instagram handle is at kuma.m4a. So K-U-M-A dot M4A, if you guys want to follow. Um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, um, you know, I have a bunch of content on there regarding music and stuff. And, you know, I have a bunch of cool covers and stuff that I've posted. So if y'all want to check it out, you can check it out. Also, the best place to um, keep, uh, you know, keep keep you know keep tabs on what i'm doing and when i'm going to be releasing my music i primarily use instagram that is my biggest social media handle i'm not big on twitter or any of those others or tiktok or anything it's just really instagram so that's where my focus is at so if you guys want to connect with me i'm more than happy to hang out cool awesome well this has been great my friend i really appreciate your time so and yours yeah. as well cool well uh you know how to get in touch with me so and so do you <laughs> <laughs> I will catch up soon. Absolutely, man. Thank you All so right. much for the opportunity yep. and um, shout out Ex Machina. Take care, my friend. Have a good day.